Hello, everybody. It's Sam, your engineer, MBA, and investor. And in today's video, I want to talk about Editas Medicine. Today's data, they published it through a virtual conference that was bound to happen today. And their stock has been hammered almost down 20% from its previous day's closing date. So I'm going to talk about all of this in this video. Before we do that, guys, before we talk about today's news, do like this video, smash that like button, destroy that like button, it really does help the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. It's quick, it's free, it's easy. And thank you so much for the support, guys. This channel is just growing at exponential speed. So thank you so much for the support and for the subscription and for the likes. So Editas, you know, this was something that a lot of people have been looking up to, right? Editas, this is the first generation CRISPR company. You know, when we talk about CRISPR therapeutics you know, and TLA, there's also Editas in the picture. Editas sort of had this unstable leadership for the previous past year and so on. But the previous months, they've sort of been back on track, right? Everything they've done so far, you know, it's it's back on track. The company's leadership is back on track. That's what you want to see from a CRISPR company. That's what you want to see from a company that has had hard times in the recent year. But now, you know, they're back on track. And... Today news basically they were they were supposed to release data and which they did right uh, phase one um, clinical data this is for their in vivo CRISPR genome editing therapy in CEP two eight nine zero obviously this is with the retinal degeneration which is we'll take a look briefly you know what it means what we saw and what we should be uh, extrapolating from this news but. Just know that, you know, if we take a look at the stock price here, look at this, guys. The company is down almost 20% today, right? It's crazy. I, I took a look this morning. It was down like, what, 5% of the big big deal. I took a look back again. It's almost 20%. That's just crazy, guys. Okay, for a company worth over, it was over $3 billion market cap before today's market open, uh, you know, have 20% down. That's a lot of money, right? That's a lot of money down. And I think this just shows how risky this space is. You know, we keep repeating this, you know, and I, I this is almost like I feel like I'm repeating myself, but it's really important that you as an investor, if you're interested in getting in genome editing and biotech and genomics, it is a very risky space. You have to do your own research. And if you're looking for companies to be up, you know, 30, 40 percent in a single day, you know, just know that it could be also down 20, 30 percent in a single day, just like what we're seeing editors right now, almost 20 percent. I mean, we saw what happened with Zymergen, right? Obviously not a CRISPR company, but take a look at a little bit of that editor's timeline here. Um, you know, look at today, you know, they're basically uh, editor presents clinical data on the first in vivo genome editing treatment for LCA10, right? So some quite nice timeline here. Obviously, Editas is one of those companies that were sort of, you know, those original CRISPR companies, right? And then other companies came about, but uh, there's definitely a brand in this space. A lot of people, when I started investing, you know, researching in this space, Editas always kept coming up. But at the time, they were sort of on this unstable leadership. I believe they changed their CEO three times in, I think, within less than three years. So, Lots of instability there, but you know they're back on track, right? They're back on track, and everything they did in this presentation to me did not warrant a minus twenty, right? Look at this initial observation. Edit one on one was associated with no serious adverse events or dose limiting toxicities to date. Early efficiency signals in the mid dose cohort suggest positive biological activity, right? So if you take a look at the, um, CEP 290 here, um, what it's all about, right? They're, they're tackling a specific disease there. And obviously, I'm not going to do you guys, um, I'm going to do you guys a favor and not go over this because I need to do more research and try to understand more. If you guys know a lot more than I do, leave me a comment below. What do you think about this program? This, this program in their pipeline, how important you think this is. You know, they talk about it's like their total, but I think they do talk about the, the total dress board market with just this program alone. I think I've seen it somewhere. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, it obviously eyes, everybody has eyes, you know, and everybody does, uh, not everybody, but a lot of people do have uh, loss of vision. And this specific disease that does cause this loss of vision is what they're trying to tackle, right? It's at least for 
what they want to begin, right? You can see their normal vision here. And uh, with CEP290, uh, the disease, this is what you're seeing. This is so bad. Like that's, yeah, that's just crazy, right? It, you know, it's not, it's not just losing a little bit of vision. It's, it's a lot more than that. So what they're doing is very noble. I've always found that what NTL um, editors are doing is very noble, respectful. And I think the reason why a lot of investors are sort of skeptical about this company is because every company that's tried to tackle the eyes, right? It's, it's a very sensitive place, right? But all uh, ironically, I, I heard it. I want I think I, I found something that it's actually one of the easiest places to sort of treat, right? Um, and you do have alternatives, right? Not for this obviously disease, but for other disease, uh, for loss of vision and so on. You do have like, I think one of my, my in-laws had, uh, had, a, had a surgery to sort of restore her eye loss here and there. So, you know, there are some alternatives. People are aware of that. It's not like you have a disease that has literally, or not just a disease, but a problem in a specific organ or a specific body part that has absolutely no alternatives, right? The eye does have, the eyes do have something going on. We, obviously, that's why we have surgeries. Um, but what they're trying to tackle here, obviously, there is no CRISPR FDA approved drug right now. And obviously, we know that CRISPR is to the masses, will be available to masses, reduces costs, and so on. So the safety of a review of the data presented, this was from August 4th, right? Uh, the data cutoff is that, you know, there's no serious adverse effect, right? It's only, we're looking at N equals to six sample size. So it's very small sample size, but that's how research projects begin, right? And if you take a look at edit observations here, first clinically investigated in vivo CRISPR gene therapy, to date, no limiting toxicity events, no serious adverse events, just like we said. Uh, they have some uh, mid co doors cohort is currently enrolling. Uh, no, again, no S in serious adverse events, no DLTs. Um, so everything they've doing so far, they're on track, right? Things are looking good. Uh, everything I've seen from this presentation, guys, you know, again, they have a duty to report every single thing from their lab data, right? When they release this type of data, if things didn't go well, they would have said it, right? They have a duty to their shareholders. It is illegal to hide data if it's meant to be released. Um, just like what we're seeing here, no when they say no serious adverse events, guys, this should be a bullish sign to you. This is what you want. No news is good news, right? This is the mentality you guys should have. So they're going over some other here, some other slides here. Definitely don't want to talk about all that here. Uh, I will link this presentation in the description below. But really the conclusion here is, you know, it is their program is the first clinical investigated in vivo CRISPR genome editing therapy. To date, no DLTs or serious adverse events have been reported. Efficiency signals, early efficiency signals in the mid dose cohorts such as positive biological activity. So again, it's, it's still early, very small sample size. We're looking at sample size of six in total. It's very small, but that's how it begins, right? And to be down 20%, I think that's just uh, a sell-off here happening. Uh, Dr. N Nat Haruni here, what I'm showing here, he said there was nothing wrong with his P1 data, still promising uh, phase one data. Just shows so, so much hype going on in the into the Rita. Rita, as we all know, will take years to play out. That's how decision investors need to make, right? This is the long term thing, guys. You need to think long term. You need to think. Don't look for these like next week data, revolutionary data. What happened with NTLA two thousand one? We sort of saw it coming for months, right? This was I remember in late twenty twenty, early twenty twenty one. People were looking forward for that, just like what we're looking for for phase one data from Kaibu Biosciences, CBO 10, right? You have to think long-term, guys. And when you have no news, it is good news, okay? No news is good news in this case. Things are looking good. What editors are doing is very noble, and it's working out right now. Their in vivo is obviously an approach that many investors are looking into. You have all this variety in this in this space in CRISPR companies, and they are literally the only company right now, public company, that are, are tackling uh, this disease the way it is um they are doing it so quite bullish on it i really love what i'm seeing but again sort of disappointed with the axe price look at this guys it, it's pretty much 20 percent now so quite disappointed from this again we we are we doing this channel guys is we don't provide financial we we provide information for free we want you guys to do your own research 
And, you know, when you see this type of reaction, you know, you have to remind yourself, you know, the long term picture, you have to remind yourself about the idea of being greedy when others are fearful, right? That was a great quote from uh, Buffett. And obviously, I'm not a I know I don't know if I said it in this channel, but I'm not really a big fan of Buffett. I think he missed out on many companies. Um, but the, the, the saying still stays, you know, be, a big, be greedy when others are fearful, be, free, be fearful when others are greedy, right? So um, it is what it is, you know, it is what it is. I just want to provide you guys data. It's basically minus 20% now. It's quite saddened to see considering there is no negative data. Everything looks good. Just a massive sell off. And it is what it is, guys. Curious to see what you guys think. Um, again, what we want to do in this channel is we want to talk about the highs, but also the lows, right? And that's the purpose of this channel is to sort of remind ourselves the long-term picture, like I said, and talk a little bit more about, you know, what we should be expecting in biotech, specifically with CRISPR companies in this case. So thank you so much for watching. If you did find value from it, do like this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing just underneath this video and we will see each other in tomorrow's video and in tomorrow's video i want to talk about teladoc okay the number one company in arc g fund in arc invest genomics fund i want to talk more about teladoc i made a previous video on them but tomorrow i want to dive deeper into the company and why i think they are currently valued at a really really reasonable price thank you so much for watching and we will see each other tomorrow thank you